Hello and welcome to another episode of DAX in 10. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the different data types and operators that are available in DAX. In the last episode, I gave a brief introduction to my new book, Hands-On Business Intelligence with DAX, and I said I'd be using it to accompany future episodes in this series. With that in mind, I'm going to start with today's episode by taking a quick look at Chapter 1 and seeing what we've already covered in previous episodes, before moving on to take a look at anything that's left for the remainder of the episode. If you'd like to get hold of a copy of my book to follow along with this series, then it's available from Amazon in both Kindle format and as a printed book. It's also available from Pack Publishing, where it's available either as a printed book or as an e-book. The ebook version only gives it to you in Kindle format, but also in a variety of other electronic formats, including PDF, as well as an online version. In addition, it's available as part of PAC's subscription service, where for a monthly fee you get access to their library of over 7,500 books, all of their videos, and around 65 interactive courses. If you do buy a copy of the book, then please let me know what you think of it by leaving a review. So, I've already covered most of Chapter 1 in previous episodes of this series. Chapter 1 of the book kicks off by introducing DAX, and that's covered in Episode 1. Working with calculated columns and measures is covered in Episode 2, whilst the Calculate function is covered in Episode 4, where I also cover the filter context in a bit more detail. I'll be looking at evaluation context again in a future episode when I cover Chapter 5 of the book, which takes a more in-depth look at evaluation context. And that just leaves working with data types and operators, which I'll be covering in this episode. OK, so let's start by taking a look at data types. So choosing the correct data type when you're building a data model is really important. Not only does it help to keep the size of the model to a minimum, but it can also help with performance when it comes to refreshing the data in your model. There are eight different data types in DAX. We've got whole numbers, decimal numbers, currency, which is also called fixed decimal number in Power BI, date and time, text, true and false, blank, and table. Now this first table shows the different data types with details of how they're stored and some details about ranges and other bits of useful information. When you load new data into a model, the modeling engine will attempt to pick the most appropriate data type for a column based on the values that are being imported into it. Even so, it's still a good idea to check the assigned data types as the modeling engine will not always be able to get this right. For example, you might have a column where in the initial data set, a column only contains integer numbers. And in that case, the modeling engine would logically assign it with the whole number data type. But where you'll run into problems is if the data for that column subsequently contains non-numeric values. This will result in an error when you try to refresh your data. Now, some DAX functions have special data type requirements. If you pass data as an argument to a DAX function that is not compatible with the data type requirements of that function, then DAX will attempt to implicitly convert it to the required data type. However, it's entirely possible that DAX will be unable to do this implicit conversion, which will result in the function returning an error. The type of implicit conversion that DAX will attempt to perform depends on the operator being used. The following tables show the implicit conversions that take place when the data type in the row is combined with the data type in the column using a particular arithmetic operator. The first table shows the implicit conversions that take place when using the addition operator. The next table shows the implicit conversions that take place when using the subtraction operator. And in this case, it shows the resulting data type where a value with the data type in the column is subtracted from a value with the data type in the row. Next, we have the implicit conversions that take place when using the multiplication operator. And finally, we have the implicit conversions that take place when using the division operator. And in this case, it shows the resulting data type where a value with the data type in the row is divided by a value with the data type in the column. Depending on the requirements of an operator, DAX will also try to convert numbers into strings and strings into numbers. For example, when using the concatenation operator, DAX will automatically convert number values into string values. In this example, we have a measure that is combining two numeric values with the concatenation operator, but before concatenating the numeric values, DAX converts them to string values. It then evaluates the result as a string with a value of 23. For an arithmetic operator, such as addition, string values will be converted into numeric values where possible. In the next example, we have a measure that combines two string values using the addition operator. 
before adding the string values together, they're converted to numeric values, and then DAX evaluates the measure as a numeric with the value of 5. However, there's the potential for errors to occur when allowed for automatic conversions as described here. For example, you can pass string values to an arithmetic operator that can't be converted into numbers, and your expression will then generate an error. So you need to ensure that you use the correct data types for columns where possible when they're going to be used with operators. Where there's a possibility of errors occurring, you should use exception handling to deal with these potential errors. We've already talked a little bit about operators, and in DAX they belong to one of four groups. There's arithmetic operators, comparison operators, concatenation operators, and logical operators. This table shows the different types of operators in the arithmetic group, along with a typical example of use. When using arithmetic operators, it's important to consider the order in which they're applied. So the next table shows the order of precedence for each of the different arithmetic operators, and if you need to override this order of precedence, then you can do so by using parentheses. In the following example, the higher precedence of the multiplication operator over the addition operator means that the multiplication of 5 and 2 is done before the 6 is added, which results in 16. But with the use of parentheses, the addition operator can be given precedence over the multiplication operator. So, in the next example, the parentheses result in the 2 and 6 being added together first, before being multiplied by 5, which gives a result of 40. The next chart shows the different types of operators available in the comparison operators group, along with examples of each in use. When using comparison expressions, the following should be taken into consideration. Boolean values are treated as greater than string values. String values are treated as greater than numeric or date time values. And numeric and date time values are treated the same. Next we have the single concatenation operator, again with a couple of examples of use, one of which shows that when using the concatenation operator, it will implicitly convert numeric values to string values. Finally, we have the operators that are available in the logical group of operators. Here's an example of the logical AND operator being used in a measure. Data sources with null values in the column result in columns in a data model that contain blank values. The impact of these blank values on a DAX expression very much depends on the operator being used and the data type expected. This final table shows how the different DAX operators handle blank values. The blank data type represents nulls, blank values, empty cells, and missing values. The blank function is used to generate blanks, while the isBlank function is used to verify the existence of a blank value. Well, that's it for chapter one and this episode. If you enjoyed it, then let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to see future episodes of DAX in 10, then please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to set your notifications so that you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and wherever you are, stay safe, keep well, and I hope to see you in the next episode of DAX in 10.